Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of Amateur Radio Station, W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. In my previous video, I described my Elmer's radio transceiver, a Swan 350. And I looked uh, out of nostalgia through the internet for uh, information about that radio, pictures of that radio, brought back, me brought back memories uh, of that thing. And uh, it noted that that particular radio, for some reason or another, was picked on, persecuted a little bit on one of the websites, saying that uh, it had a nickname called the Swan 3 Drifty because it drifted in frequency, uh, seemingly more than other radios did at the time. Now, I have no idea. I never made comparisons, and I don't know about the validity of that claim versus any other radio's drift. I do know that my first variable frequency oscillator, VFO, radio was uh, a night kit VFO attached to a Johnson Viking Adventurer transmitter and that thing drifted horribly. I remember it, uh, I constantly had to correct for the drift. All of those radios back in those days, the mid 60s, 1960s, were entirely vacuum tube operated. And vacuum tubes, if you're old enough to recall, required a certain time to, quote, warm up, unquote. You may even remember that from your tabletop kitchen radio. I remember a tabletop kitchen radio that we had back in as early as 1958, I think, 1958. Good Lord, that's more than 60 years ago, or, or yeah, about 60 years ago, 61 years ago, you had to wait a couple of minutes for the thing to warm up before you could hear anything on it. Warm up? What do you mean by that? Well, the filaments in the tubes had to get hot enough to emit the electrons necessary to make the vacuum tube work. Uh, and as the filaments got hot, they caused the interior of the radio to get warmer and warmer. And the various components in the radio, cap capacitors, resistors, other things, had a property and still do have a property called temperature coefficient, which uh, describes whether uh, the value of the component will increase or decrease as the temperature rises, and if so, by how much uh, as a percentage per degree Fahrenheit or degree Celsius, depending upon where in the world you happen to be and measure temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius. And those changes in component values could cause the frequency of various oscillators uh, and circuits, tuned circuits in the radio, to change. And that would be the reason for the drift. Even receivers could drift off frequency that way. That's, I think, partly why novice class licensees were required to use crystal control, because crystals were much less prone to drift in frequency than variable frequency vacuum tube operated oscillators. We're over that now in the digital era drift is pretty much unknown in any decent radio. But back in the uh, 60s, it wasn't uncommon at all. You had to wait sometimes a good hour before the radio temperature inside the thing would stabilize sufficiently for the frequency to remain relatively constant as time passed. So I remember that problem of drift being significant. Uh, but when I got to the later radios, the Drake R4A and T4X, 
which I believe I obtained around 1970, courtesy of my venerable dad, who's still alive and kicking at age 95. I remember those as being quite stable radios, and the drift problem was largely overcome by then, but the thing still had to warm up. That was even true of my electronic keyer. The Ico and the uh, Halicrafters keyers were all tube operated and they had to warm up a little while too. So vacuum tube drift problems uh, seemed to be a big deal back then and I think mainly part of the trouble was and if you get vintage radios, you're still going to encounter that problem in some of them. You have to give them a long time to temperature stabilize. And you have to make sure that you don't operate them in extremely cold environments where that warm-up might take even longer than an hour. Just another little old-timer's tip from a rapidly aging old-timer. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, saying 73 and so long, which, drift or no drift, vacuum tubes or digital electronics, in my native fist, has always, does now, and shall always translate to, di-di-di-da-di-da. Di, 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 di.